Just in one quarter, Jordans did over a billion US dollars in business. Like Mike, I wanna be like Mike. If you were a kid in the 80s and 90s like I was, you are probably transfixed to the NBA and loved Michael Jordan. What an endorsement. In fact, the greatest endorsement in sports history has been the Air Jordans endorsement from Nike. When you think about brands across industries, there's one thing that the biggest ones in the world really now, and that's their identity. And there's no better way to nail your brand identity than with the right kind of endorsement. And this is where Nike did an amazing job and really built their business over the last couple of decades on the back of their Air Jordan endorsement. But Nike today is not the Nike that started out. In fact, Nike started in 1964 at the University of Oregon as a running shoe company. It was actually called Blue Ribbon Sports and it didn't become Nike until some time later. Nike was known as a running shoe for decades, but they had aspirations to be much broader with their business. To do so, they needed to find the right kind of endorsement and the right kind of person to partner with to help bridge the gap, the cultural gap, with their customers. So in 1984, they took a massive gamble on a young rookie called Michael Jordan. Now, MJ also took a huge gamble on them because Nike wasn't very well known at that stage in basketball. There were obviously Converse and other companies that were doing big endorsement deals with athletes. So Jordan had some decisions to make on who he went with as a rookie. And he went with Nike specifically because they were different. They also involved him in the process. So he felt much more aligned with them as a business as well. Over the next 10 years, Jordan grew and grew in his fame. People think about Jordan now and they think about the rings that the Bulls won in, I think, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, the six rings that they run. But he was playing for the Chicago Bulls well before they were any good. In fact, Jordan helped them bridge the gap over a, really an eight year period where they restructured the entire organization. For much of this period, Jordan was getting lots of publicity. He became an all-star, but he didn't have that ring yet. But Nike was very happy with its endorsement. In fact, so happy that each year they kept putting out a new Air Jordan shoe. A couple of years in, they brought in Tinker Hatfield, who was a very well-known um, designer at the time. And for the next, I think, two and a half decades, Tinker and MJ have been designing the shoes together. Now, Nike really hit the jackpot with Jordan. He went on to win six championships, multiple MVPs, be known as the GOAT the world over. And Nike ultimately built their brand because of this endorsement. So show me the money. What has it been worth to Nike in real terms? Well, last year, just in one quarter, Jordans did over a billion US dollars in business. And that was in 2019, over a decade since MJ hung up the shoes. So what can we learn for our businesses? Well, endorsements can be very lucrative, no matter the size of your business. And that might not be an influencer. It might just be the network that you use. It might be the people that are clients of yours as well, that are seen as being connected to your business. Think about how you might be able to find the next Air Jordan, how you can see that rookie, that relationship that can help improve your brand identity for the long term. Now, you might not find the next MJ, but that's not the point. The point is even big brands need to be mindful of their brand identity. So have a think about what you're doing for your brand identity, who your brand ambassadors are, who the people are that you partner with, or what's going out in the market that says that you're connected to your client or your consumer, like Nike did with Air Jordans.